recording. Last time I forgot. Let me do share screen. Hello, everybody. My name is Leanne. If you don't know, if this is your first part, this is a third part of the three part series, the final part. Um, it was progressive. You don't necessarily need to be at one to do the other, but we did do exercises and whatnot um, to kind of get to this point. But we're going to do a recap. So, first, let's do a check. And again, um, everybody's going to be sent the recording. So I know everybody's super busy and, and doesn't have time to always watch the live. But can you see the screen? <laughs> Macros made easy, part three. Okay, so welcome game, part three. We're going to be talking merry, merry macros. And we're going to go um, through a recap. I am Leanne Watanabe. I am a personal trainer and a macros nutrition coach. And my philosophy is threefold. We have to focus on a person holistically, meaning we have to focus on their mindset, their macros, which is the nutrition piece, and, and their muscles, which I do through strength training. It's never just one thing. Um, if you've been you know, dabbling in some kind of dieting or fitness for a while now, you kind of have seen over, the, over time that you, know, you really can't just diet and not forget about the exercise piece. And you really can't focus focus on the exercise piece and not really pay attention to your diet if you're looking for some kind of change. And the change, I'm talking either feeling stronger, building muscle, either body fat, um, working on bone density, moving better in your body, sports performance in terms of if you're racing, not racing 5Ks, any kind of, you know, event base. But so with that being said, uh, this is just, again, my bio. I have over 25 years in the, in the field experience. I've always worked with one clients one-on-one. -on -one pre-COVID face-to-face. Now I'm an in-person and virtual trainer through NASM. That's the accreditation that I hold. And then um, through COVID, I decided to like take a tons of advanced certifications um, in specific areas that my clients, my female clients are dealing with. So my most of my clients are either late 30s or 40 plus. So I did an advanced certification with Dr. Jay Tita in female hormones and metabolism. He's great to follow if you are dealing with any kind of sort of perimenopausal, menopausal, or postmenopausal issues, he's on Instagram. Uh, then I wanted to work, focus on the mindful piece of food and nutrition, and Jill Coleman does an excellent, she's the first to kind of tackle this moderation 365 intuitive eating, which just means you kind of like, you know, everything in moderation, no foods off limits. And that was helpful because a lot of my female clients deal with a lot of restriction where they have a lot of long lists of all these foods that have been off limits for a really long time. And um, that leads into other issues. So that was a really great insight into how we can lead our clients to eat more mindfully and intuitively. And then I'm currently which is what kicked this whole thing off in the understudy with Eve Guzman. She's a macrobiologist who entered the macro space. And I am uh, just finishing up my mentorship with, with her, which brings me to why um, I am talking about macros today. I have, again, been in the field for 25 years, but I have never, never have found a nutritional approach, which I fully wholeheartedly believed in because I come from a very sort of extreme and disordered food and eating behavior and lifestyle. And most of the programs out there will kind of facilitate along this low calorie dieting approach to get to your goals. And that sort of like sets up a mental block for me because I've been doing that kind of way for so long with no success that I didn't want to start promoting it to the clients that I serve. So then I found Eve, followed her for a really long time, and just really fell in love with her process. And then I decided to do the her process on myself. So this is kind of the recap then. So 18 to 40, you know, just a lot of like living and dying by the scale. I was an emotional food restrictor, not an emotional food eater. I was a heavy, heavy just food restrictor and distracted myself for the really long time with exercise. And my mantra used to be, your body will break down far before your mind will. I legit used to say that to myself all the time. Now I'm 44, very different in a very different body. Um, macros has helped me find food flexibility and exercise freedom. And for me, going along this journey, I had to sort of hit a rock bottom and hitting a rock bottom was in 2018 when I had a late um, preterm labor of, of identical twin boys. So now my mantra is very different. It's no colon, still rolling. 
Um, and as for the rest, just do your best. I kind of always preach that to my clients that I serve now. As for the rest, just do your best, right? That's all we can do these days. So then in part one, well, if you were with me, in macros part one, we talked about your metabolism. We all have a metabolism. You'll sometimes hear a lot of people say, oh, my metabolism must be so slow because either I keep gaining weight no matter what I do, or as I age, I keep getting weight. Basically, it's just your body's gas tank, your energy tank. A part of your metabolism is what we call a BMR or your basal me metabolic rate. And it's basically the total amount of calories that your unique body burns every day to do all the things, right? So we all have a BMR. And we all are burning differently. Even sitting here now listening to me on Zoom, we're all burning different calories just sitting here listening to me talk. And I'm burning a little bit more because I'm doing most of the talking because that again is energy. Talking is energy. Moving my hands is energy. Fidgeting, it's all energy. So your metabolism or your unique metabolic rate will depend on all these different factors, right? And your metabolic rate or your metabolism, it changes all the time. So if you're on your feet a lot, your, met meta uh, your metabolic rate or your metabolism will be a little bit higher. If you're at your office or desk for most of the day, your metabolism is going to dip. It's going to be a little bit lower because you're sedentary most of the day. So what we do in macros made easy is we use your very unique metabolic rate to determine your food macro goals based upon where you're at. And there's three areas we can do macros for. If your goal is weight loss, which I like to say more body fat loss, because we don't care about scale weight loss. We care about body composition, body fat loss, because that's how you change the shape of your body. We have to eat less than your met, uh, metabolic rate. Okay. If you want to weight gain, because I know we have a couple people here that are looking to gain lean muscle mass, then we have to eat more than our met metabolism, more than our metabolic rate. And then if you just want to maintain your weight, where you're like, I'm good, Leanne, I just really want to focus on my relationship with food and perhaps eating more balanced and get off this yo-yo diet. I don't want to work on that mindset piece first. So you're willing to just maintain your current weight. Then what we do is we set your macros or you'll eat equal to your metabolic rate. Okay, so that was just kind of part one. I mean, that is more like the science behind that. So here's a screenshot if you missed part one, but basically talking about um, what we did. So macro uh, nutrients, we eat them every day. No matter if you're dieting or not, we all eat macros because macros are carbs, proteins, and fats. Macros give your body energy. Your body uses energy to burn calories. So energy, you get energy from the food calories you eat. The food calories you eat are proteins, carbs, and fats, and proteins, carbs, and fats are macros. So it's just a fancy way to, to you know, okay, macros, you know, but it's really just food you eat. If you ate for breakfast, if you had coffee with milk, and that's all you ate, you still ate macros because you ate, you drank milk. Milk is dairy. Milk is a little bit of protein, a little bit carb, a little bit of fat. So basically, this is how it works. One gram of protein is four calories. One gram of carbs is four calories. One gram of fat is nine calories. And you just need to know that as if you ever get your own macros, because you kind of play around with this. This is some, what we call macro math. This is kind of how you figure stuff out. And the more informed you are, the better you can be at navigating your macros journey, whether you're doing it with me as a coach, another coach, or on your own. So what does it mean? Why is it all of a sudden this buzzword tracking macros? Tracking macros means that you're tracking calories too. Okay, so we are watching calories, but tracking macros, meaning we are setting a customized target every day of protein, carbs, and fats. So most of the diets, the low calorie diets will say, eat 1200 calories a day. I don't care if you eat $1,200 McDonald's or 1200 calories in whole food, non-processed food, right? Your body will use that food very different. Yeah, you'll still lose weight, but because you're not, we're not quite prioritizing the calories in terms of giving you a specific target for pro proteins, carbs, and fats, your body doesn't tend to use the food that you do eat as efficiently. So what we're trying to do is we macro track because we maximize the food you eat in order to get you the best possible result based upon your goal. So counting macros, tracking macros is what's going to change your body composition. And again, every, all my clients, I said, Leon, I want to 
I want to shape and tone. I want to change my look. I want to tighten up here. I want to tighten up my leg. They'll show me, right? And basically, that's what they're telling me. They think they want to lose scale weight, but me, you know, as a as a personal trainer, I know they want to change their body composition. So counting macros will do that for you. Counting calories alone without having any kind of macro awareness, that will change the scale weight. So you could lose a bunch of weight just by counting calories, but you're going to lose a lot of muscle as well. You're going to lose a lot of water weight initially as well. And that's why we track macros. And I mean, that's why I put myself through it. So in part two, if you are here in part two, that's where we got down to the nitty gritty. It's a very specific formula. And we, if you were on that call, we went through all these steps to give you your unique starting numbers, right? So we had people on the call, they were asking a lot of questions, but pretty much this is just the rundown. If you're new to joining my macros made easy, there are steps in how we're doing it, right? So first we calculate your basal metabolic rate then we calculate what's called your total daily energy expenditure then we customize your calories for your goals whether you want to gain weight lose weight maintain weight and then we go from there then we calculate your macros so again this was just part two where we got down into the nitty-gritty in terms of how to figure out your macros so now in part three oh so here we go screenshot if you want so in order to figure out your macros, if you're doing it on your own, you need a couple of data points. So you need to calculate your basal metabolic rate. So you can write that down because you can always Google that later. And you need to calculate your TDEE, which is your total daily energy expenditure. So BMR, basal metabolic rate, we all have a BMR. That's the calories you burn to survive, like just to get up and you're living. Your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure, is your BMR, your calories that you need to just survive, and the calories that you actually use to thrive. So all the extra calories now you burn to go walk from the home to the car, go from the car to the office, maybe do that exercise class that you like, maybe run around with your animals, walk your dogs, play with your kids, all that extra activity calories, that plus your BMR equals your TDEE. So you need those two things, right, to calculate. And again, we did that in part two. But in part three, this is your holiday guide. So we're going to talk about tracking or no tracking, right? Because I do a lot of work with my clients on that. We're going to talk to what is an untracked meal versus a cheat meal. Because a lot of people here, oh, I can have a cheat meal. I have a cheat meal. I have a cheat meal. We'll talk about the difference. We'll give you an example of an untracked meal. Then what I'm going to do is give you this um, great exercise for, okay, if you can't track or you can't weigh your food on the fly, maybe you're at an, an event and it's not really suitable for you to be like measuring your food, we're going to do it. I'm going to teach you plate portion sizes according to what's called visual macros. That's a strategy how visual macros add up for the day that you can do that. And then we're going to talk about the fun stuff, how to track alcohol, some baking swaps. I'm going to give you two recipes, one for the one that you can take to people's houses because it's a pretty good knockoff. And then the lemon mug cake is more for to, to tie you over that you could probably have every day or so that is really macro friendly. And then we're going to do an app swap for a side dish and then it's just just easy stuff, mushrooms. And then I'm going to go into my January collective that's going to be kicking off. So to track or not to track, that is the question. So when holidays roll around, right, a lot of people fall off the um, wagon, so to speak. And I always give my clients a choice depending on if they want to use a holiday as a non-track day or if they want to track their food. So basically an untracked meal is this. It's a healthy habit meal chosen by using macro tracking experience. So what you've been doing, if you've been tracking your macros to make a confident and reasonable choice of a meal without using a food scale or tracking app. So that's what we mean when I say you want an untracked day. This is where you would replace a normal tracked meal with a reasonably sized untracked meal, right? So this is the option that I give to my clients. Untracked meal, even though we may not be tracking it, logging it, weighing it, it's still mindful versus eating mindless. So when people hear, well, can I have a cheat meal or can I have a cheat day? I want to make a big distinction between untracked meal and a cheat meal or cheat day because basically this is, and again, this is just very 
simple to the point, but pretty much a cheat meal or cheat day is a, basically like an F it free for all, eat like an asshole, right? And that's, that's how I want to hone it in to make it more sense. Because a cheat meal or a cheat day is really like there's no mindfulness involved. It's brain shutdown mode and you're just eating everything that you want to eat. So in macro tracking, we try to stay away from cheat meals or cheat days. We try to instead empower you with untracked meals. So there's a difference because we don't want untracked meals to be throw everything out the window kind of meals, right? Tracking is a tool to get to a goal, but ultimately we have to have this solid mindset with consistent healthy nutritional habits forever, right? Because a lot of people ask me, well, Leon, I get it tracking it seems like a lot you want me to weigh my food measure my food you want me to log it we have to check in with each other to make sure i'm hitting my macros goals will i have to do that forever and no we don't want you to have to do that forever we want to i want to empower you and teach you how you can establish this solid foundation of mindfulness with your eating and using your macros for your body and and as you're going through the process, figuring out the meal combos that work best for you, that you have it kind of solidified and nailed down so that eventually we transition you off of macro tracking to what's called visual macro tracking, which we'll go through, through later. And then eventually what's called intuitive macro eating, where you're just eating regular because you've already been doing it for so long, you kind of know how to best eat for your your body and your goals okay so again macro tracking is not meant to do be done forever so this is an example sorry we have somebody on can we put some can we put some uh, us on mute sorry yeah thanks so untrack meal what is an example so for me a typical macro friendly meal always will include some solid protein potatoes rice or bread depends on what i'm in the mood for and like usually like veggie fiber salad something like that fruit okay so an untracked reasonably sized meal for me can either be like i'll have two or three sizes of pizza and i try to combine it with fiber with veggies or i have if i'm really craving burger and fries and i have burger and fries and i add more veggies if i think i'm going to be i'm a high volume eater like it takes a lot to make me full so even though I eat burgers and fries, I'm going to still be super hungry. So I know for my body, that's how I operate. So I'm going to make sure like I try to eat either extra veggies or extra fiber during that untracked meal because that will keep me fuller longer. I also love sushi. I love sushi, but man, sushi for me doesn't fill me up. So I will have like all the sushi that I want, but I also make sure I try to pair it again with fiber or more protein. Like I'll add more protein to my sushi. So that I know that after I have my untracked meal, I'll still be satiated, full, right? So you want to, the whole point of an untracked meal is being mindfully of the port, mindful of the portion and eating comfortably until you're comfortably full, but not stuffing myself to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I got to unbutton my pants, all that stuff, right? I feel like super stuffed. So what, when do we do untracked meals? Again, I, I work with my clients to kind of decide on that. Usually it's holidays, special events, nights out, or when they need like a mental break to reset because they're like, you know what? I just am not, can't track today. Like everything happened at work and the kid and the sick and da, 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 da. And then, you know, so it's also depending on your emotion, but it's also best to think about this. You want to do an untracked day either on a maintenance day or your, your high calorie or high macro day, or if you're gonna get in your workout day, that's when you kind of wanna be able to do an untracked meal. So again, it's we throw it in whenever you need it. And that's the benefit of working sort of with a one-on-one -on -one coach because we navigate that stuff together. But if you're doing it on your own, an untracked day, you're like, oh, I'm getting bored, it's getting tedious. This could be perfect if you like say been missing on like family, Friday family pizza night for a while, right? And you've been doing pizza night maybe with the family, but you don't want to have to like only track and, and do all that stuff for like one or two slices of pizza and fit it in and navigate the rest of your day. You just kind of want to eat and enjoy the time. Then we kind of do it like that, give you sort of like a non-track day on that day. But I want you, if you're doing it on your own, to schedule these in for you 
periodically because the last thing you want to do is keep you sort of like in this this ritual or this routine and there's no break because it does get mentally fatiguing no matter what you do no matter what diet you follow whether you're macro tracking it does get mentally fatigued so use this as like a strategy in your back pocket that we can pull out for those days where you feel like ah, i don't want to do this okay so this is now going to teach you about plate portion sizes for visual macros. So I use this in the beginning with some of my clients who are very like adverse to using a scale in the beginning. Like they're so overwhelmed with all the things they think they have to do that we really back up the process and we start here. So this is just really basic. This is also, if you're new to the call, you, have, you don't have your macro numbers. This is how you could start too by just setting up your macro friendly plate using this visual macros. So an ideal macro friendly plate would be like this, a quarter plate of protein. So if you can see the quarter, the open palm here, a quarter plate of complex starchy carbs or fruits, fruit are carbs. So then you have the fist, close fist is like, one serving of starchy carbs, so rice, bread, pasta, noodles, sweet potatoes, fruit, and then a half of your plate is non-starchy carbs because vegetables are carbs, but they're non-starchy carbs. So they don't impact your metabolism and your blood sugar as quickly as like regular starchy carbs. So you can screenshot this. You also get the recording though, but, and um, fat, we have two ways we can we can do fat. Fat is usually thumb size, thumb size, and we'll go over the, the amounts in a little bit, but thumb, your whole thumb is like one serving of fat, usually like one tablespoon, and then you have your half of your thumb for like half of the fat. But again, if you were like, okay, say you're at a family party and you're like, man, I really don't know if I want to, I don't want to track here today, but I don't want to blow it. I don't want to make this like an untracked day or a cheat meal. And so what you do is you would do this. Okay, so I'm going to hook up my plate like this. Quarter protein, so palm size protein, a thumb size of a fat, a fist size of a carb, and a um, two fifths, half a plate, so two fifths size of non-starchy carb or vegetable. So that would be one serving. So again, if you go back for seconds, you could do it again, right? Palm size of protein, another thumb size for fat, a fist size for starchy carb, or two fist size for your vegetable. And then this is what it would look like. Again, this is a method for not tracking, not using a food scale. Okay. So the how we work with serving sizes for visual macros. So you're using your hand again to estimate, right? When we're eating out. Or if you're at a restaurant too, and you're like, oh, I don't wanna bring my scale to the restaurant. This is how you would do it. You see this guy here? So one palm of protein, and you can screenshot this if you want, or take a picture, is about 25 grams of protein. Again, we're just trying to get close, gang. This is not perfect. We don't wanna strive for perfection. We wanna just, as for the rest, do our best. So a palm of protein is about 25 grams. Two fifths of vegetables is about 10 to 20 grams of carbs. One fistful size of fruit is about 25 grams of carbs. A handful, so an open hand, a handful of, of carbs is about 25 grams of carbs. So one handful of like rice or bread, a dinner roll, noodles, any kind of like really oatmeal, quinoa, all these uh, starchy carbs, that's about 25 grams, this handful, or an entire thumb. So an entire thumb, salad dressing, oil, avocado is about 15 grams of fat. And if you don't want that much grams of fat, you can go half of your thumb and that's about eight. So this is, again, just real beginner basic stuff that you can start to kind of make sure you have a balanced macro plate to optimize your health. And even if, you, if you're new and you just start here, I guarantee you'll see shifts. Shifts, changes in how you feel, your energy, and also a little bit in your body composition over time. If you just start prioritizing the macros, the different types of food groups. And that's what we mean when we macro track. 
how do we, it's prioritizing proteins, carbs, and fats. So, and then there's a great graphic here um, that kind of gives you like side by side with the meat and the hand, the fist and the vegetable. So that's a really great one that he has. Okay, so now how does it add up for the day? Again, like I'm saying, if you're out for the day, maybe you're traveling on vacation. So four palms of protein per day is about hundred grams. Four fistful of veg is 35 grams. One fistful of fruit, 25 grams. Three handfuls of carbs per day is about 75 grams of carbs total. Three thumbs of fat per day is about 45 grams of fat. So this total is like 100 grams protein, 135 grams carbs, 45 grams fat for the day. So if you are working with me and I gave you macros and you have your total macros for the day and say it's close to this, then you would shoot for these, right? If you're out and about the whole day, like I said, maybe you're on vacation and you're not taking your food scale and these are your macros, this is what you would do. The four palms per day of food, of meat, four fifths of veg, and you kind of just mix and match or you can play around and combine each through each of these um, different visual hand macros to make up your total macros for the day. And again, this is just a quick and dirty strategy that you can use when you can't take the scale with you. Okay, so now let's talk about alcohol. So a lot of people get tripped up because alcohol doesn't really have calories or carbs on the label. So people think, oh, alcohol is calorie less. <laughs> it's how we metabolize alcohol that's the problem, right? So all the, all research, the research and the science has, to has to told us this, alcohol, is seven calories per gram, per one gram. So if you remember back in the beginning, I gave you the breakdown for carbs, proteins, and fat. And fat had nine calories per gram. So it's, it's nutrient dense, meaning it racks up for fat, we, it racks up a lot of calories per gram. So as you can see, alcohol is right up there sort of with fat, right? Um, if fat is nine calories per gram, alcohol is seven calories per gram. So that's what I want you to think too, in terms of if you drink alcohol, you can do it, it's fine, but we just want to account for it, we want to track for it. So as you can see, I said, it's very dense compared to the other main macros. So carbs four, protein four, fat nine, and the pure alcohol is seven. So to track, how do we track alcohol? This is a lot of um, questions I get for a lot from my ladies who love their wine. So we allocate these calories to either two ways. We either allocate the calories to your carb intake, we allocate it to your fat intake, or we can do it with a combo of both, half fat, half carb. I know if you're, if you're new, you might not understand this right now, but we can always talk uh, more later. We never want to substitute alcohol intake for protein. <laughs> That's cheating because our bodies break down different types of food in very different ways. And the way when we, when we eat protein, protein is called, it gives us what we call a thermic effect of food, meaning protein requires a lot of energy for your body to break down. So your body has to really work hard to break down protein. So you're, you're, you're like burning some calories when you're eating protein. On the other hand, alcohol your body, it's because it sees it, alcohol is actually like a toxin. Your body sees it as sort of a toxin that it processes it very differently. So we never want to track alcohol for protein. It's either carbs, fats, or both. And what does that look like? So that looks like this. Now, this is just talking straight like beer, wine, right? Beer, wine, carbs clear like vodka, rum, whiskey. If you're using a mix-in, like when you're looking at margaritas, sex on the beach, Long Island iced tea, you got to factor in those mix-ins because those mix-ins like the juices, mimosa, they have carbs and fats that you're going to also have to track, right? And then comes the calories that you track from the alcohol. So we do the math. Right. So let's just think that we're, that we're talking about a 200 calorie glass of wine, which probably get you like maybe six ounces of wine. OK, so if the wine has 200 calories, is it six ounces of wine and you're doing 
200 calories, we could track it as a part. So right here, take the total amount of calories in your alcoholic beverage. So you're in your wine and we divide it by four. So right here, carbs, 200 calories and six ounces of wine divided by four calories per gram. That would mean you would have to allot 50 grams of carbs for your six ounce glass of wine, okay? If you want to instead track your wine as fat, we take that total amount of calories in that six ounce glass of wine and we divide it by nine. So fats here, 200 calories and six ounces of wine divided by nine calories per gram of fat. And that means you get, you have to allot 22.2 grams of fat for your wine. So this just, this kind of gives you an indication, right? Like, okay, if I've been drinking alcohol, it's going to be either high carb or high fat. And that's totally fine, right? We just want to make sure we're planning ahead for it. Now, how do you decide? My ladies usually decide by seeing like, okay, what are they eating throughout the day? Are they going to like uh, figure out their carbs? Are they going to have a lot of carbs left over for the day that they're going to then allocate toward this alcohol, the wine? Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe they're going to have more fat left over for the day so that they're going to track their wine towards fats. Some ladies will tell me, oh, you know what? I don't have that much left over in carbs or fats, but we can make it work because then we do, we split between the two. So this is your third option of tracking alcohol. So we take that six ounce glass of wine, which has 200 calories, and we divide it by two because we take 100 calories divide by four. That's going to get us 25 grams of carbs. And then take that 100 calories, that half, divided by nine for nine calories per gram of fat. And then that's going to give us 11.1 .1 grams of fat. So then they would track it half and half as 25 grams of carbs and 11 grams of fat. And again, that's for like one six ounces of wine, one six ounce glass of wine. So you may be thinking, how do I know how many calories are in the alcohol? And that's stuff that you get used to and you get experience with when you start tracking your food, right? This is the stuff we navigate where I show you what sites you go to if you don't know. If you're on the tracking app with me, you go look at my food library and you copy my food library because I've been like a walking macro calculator forever. And um, it's just like a process, a learning curve if you're not sure about what has calories, what calories are in what. Any questions on alcohol? No, everybody's okay? Okay. So now- Al let's, Alcohol is okay. fattening. It can't, it, well, only if, okay, so alcohol can be fattening if you're eating in a surplus and your goal is to lose weight, right? That's the thing, like it doesn't, we don't, it doesn't have to be if we plan for it. So at the end of the day, no matter what diet you do, right? Macro tracking, Jenny Craig, your Weight Watchers counting blocks, you're doing Herbalife, Airborne, Isogenics. All of those things are, no matter what you do, everything in a, in a way is calorie controlled at the very base because all the science shows in order to lose weight, you have to burn more or eat less than what you're, you have to eat less than what you're burning. That's how you lose weight. If you want to gain weight, you have to eat more than you're burning, right? So then when people, what we do is when we track alcohol, we just are putting a budget, allocating a little bit of budget toward the alcohol so that in big scheme of things, you can still be within your macro ranges that are suitable for your goals, whether that be weight loss or weight gain. But now we're just accounting for a lot of things that ladies typically don't account for, like, like the wine or like the alcohol. So it, it can be fattening, but we don't have to eliminate it. And that's the beauty about macro tracking. If we can, we can fit in anything. If you want a filet of fish we can fit in a filet of fish right? So, and that's what people like about macro tracking, because there's nothing off limits, but it does require a level of mindfulness and planning ahead in order to make it work. So okay. 
moving on to the macro made easy holiday recipe. So this, this is some tried and true just baking swaps, okay? Like that you can use that are good like rule of thumb. So you can, anything for like your favorite cake, cookie or brownie to give it like just a healthier spin. So one cup of avocado can be substituted for one cup of butter. One cup of applesauce can be substituted for one cup of oil. Three fourths cup of wheat flour, again, just substituted for white flour. And then we can substitute three fourths cup of honey for one cup of plain white sugar. So again, with honey though, just note that because honey is more liquid, you may need to decrease the liquid of your recipe that you're subbing the sugar for by a quarter cup. And honey is going to be sweeter than white sugar. So you should take that into consideration too. I always like to swap out, if I'm really trying to be macro friendly for my numbers, then I use a non-sugar sweetener. I like Swerve. A lot of people like Stevia. Some people like Trivia. So you use anywhere from a, a half to a three quarter cup of non-sugar sweetener for a cup of sugar. And again, this is all sort of like also by your, by your own personal taste. Some people like really sweet and some people don't like super sweet. So one banana can also be substituted for two eggs to provide that, that binding effect. One cup of non-fat yogurt, Greek yogurt, can be substituted for one cup of butter or oil. And that's really awesome because Greek yogurt gang has high protein. So not, our, not only are you lessening the fat by a gazillion, because a cup of butter or a cup of oil has a ton of fat, but you're also upping the protein intake too if you make that swap. And then the regular stuff, like, you know, if you want cocoa nibs, cacao can be substituted for chocolate chips, powdered peanut butter. I have found PB2 is a brand I like. It's a really awesome swap for traditional peanut butter because PB2 has a bit of protein and really minimal fat if you're looking at traditional peanut butter. So it's a really great swap to save on those fat macros if you want others like wine <laughs> okay so this is a recipe chocolate bark and this is the recipe that you can actually take to like somebody's house you know my mom she's always funny she's like don't be bringing no macro friendly recipes to to our house for thanksgiving or christmas <laughs> she was like she thinks it's so rude if i try to like do the low fat version of stuff so i just give them the full fat on pumpkin crunch and everything but so this is a nice um swap chocolate bark recipe because um a lot of the people that i've served it to they can't even tell and again if you look at so you can screenshot it or when you send out the recording you'll get it but it's it's okay for macros you know it's not like super low car i mean super low fat or anything it has 140 calories um, and 14 grams of fat per serving. The carbs are, are low, granted. They're six carbs, but it's a little bit higher fat. But um, all the people I've served it to, they can't, they don't, even my husband who's like a real hardcore critic, he can't tell that I made the swap. So again, I just used the sugar substitute. And then um, really that was about it, cocoa butter instead of, and I used a unsweetened um, cocoa from Ghirardelli. So this is just the instructions if you want to screenshot it. And this is, like I said, something that can pass that you take to somebody's house that you don't like want to serve them maybe like the really macro friendly version. And then on this next one, I'm going to give you, this is my go-to dessert. So I eat pretty much, a, I eat like a mug cake every day because I have a sweet tooth. So this is really amazing. This is my go-to dessert, lemon mug cake. Um, I got the recipe actually from somebody else. And so this is, again, here's the ingredients. So there's two parts. There's ingredients for the mug cake, and that's here. So this includes protein powder, vanilla. And you just got to kind of play around um, with brands. I like Legion. I use Legion vanilla protein powder. Um, other people have all these different other brands. I say, hey, most of us have some form of protein powder on hand. So to stick with that, use that first and see how it turns out. Because every brand of protein powder will taste a little bit different. Um, you know, if you get a veg, a vegetable-based or a vegan-based protein powder, not a whey-based, that might taste a little bit different too. But 
there is the mug cake recipe. This is one serving and it's easy because I just make it real quick in the process food processor. And then what you do is you combine all the ingredients into just a mug, a coffee mug. I do a huge coffee mug. And then I microwave it for a minute 30. And then I usually top it with whatever I want, like whatever I have on hand. But there's this go-to sweet icing um, recipe I have here on the right side of the screen, which is amazing. And again, that's another, that's from, a, that's a recipe from, if you go follow her, she's, her name is Your Healthy Hedonista. She has created this sweet icing, which is pretty awesome. And it provides you a good amount that you can use throughout. So I have the macros here just for the icing. And this will give you like a couple of servings throughout, like, you know, to last several days. And then if you make the mug cake, with the 15 grams of sweet icing here at the bottom of the screen, I give you the macros. So 31 grams of protein rounded, 16 grams of carbs and about 10 grams of fat. So that's really good because it's really hearty. Like it's a little, it's, it's, it comes out like really soft, like a cake. And then with the sweet icing, it's like frosting. I've also played around with this recipe. If I don't want a lemon flavor, I eliminate the lemon juice and the lemon zest. And I've experimented with stuff like pumpkin, sweet potato, PB2 to make it more peanut butter flavored. But again, this is like a super macro friendly go-to dessert. And just know that if you start adding in different stuff, your macros will change a little bit, right? When you go track it, Maybe you do it a little bit different. You track it a little bit different. The macros will come out a little bit different. Okay. So now, now here's some quick macro made easy swaps for like appetizers or side dishes. So again, we talked about a cup of Greek yogurt. Well, you can use a cup of Greek yogurt instead of a cup of sour cream. And again, the Greek yogurt has phenomenal amount of protein. You can do spaghetti squash instead of noodles in pasta salad or uh, spaghetti squash um, in sub of uh, potatoes in uh, au gratin. Cauliflower mash is a great substitute for mashed potatoes. Or you can even do a half and half if you're not sure like what it'll taste like. You can do half cauliflower, half regular mash. And then there are things like pecans and honey drizzle, which can be substituted for marshmallows as toppings for sweet potatoes, cucumber slices instead of triscuits or crostinis. You know, so many things we can swap out here. Like you could do fat-free cream cheese and smoked salmon with tomato, cheese, balsamic vinaigrette. You could do a Greek yogurt dill dip with tomato. Combinations are endless. That's why I like having my little group. Um, a lot of them, some of them are foodies. And so one of the gals will always try to take traditional Asian dishes, like, and she'll make a macro friendly. And so it's, she's a good, uh, great tool to have because she'll teach us how to do it. And then we'll copy her. Her name is Lindsay. She's on my Instagram. And then avocado and Greek yogurt can be substituted for egg yolks and sour cream for double eggs. Okay, so here is one. One of the ones that I like for holiday recipes is just super easy stuff. Mushrooms. And they pack a little bit of protein with each bite. I have macros here on the uh, bottom right. And this is, makes about 24 mushrooms. So one mushroom gives you these macros here. And here's the ingredients so it has a little bit of ground turkey some um third one third fat so the one third less fat philadelphia cream cheese a little bit of mozzarella you can screenshot that okay so here's the instructions if you want to take it down or wait for the video I'll leave it up for a little bit about 10 minute prep time. If you have questions, you can always unmute yourself. I'm always bad at this. I can't see the chat and do full screen at the same time. Okay, with that being said, so this is going to be leading into I am offering my first Macros Made Easy group coaching collective in January. 
So it's going to be eight weeks and it's going to be um, with a small group of uh, intimate group of women. And what we're going to be doing is working on macros made easy. So weeks, this is kind of like the rundown. So the first two uh, weeks will be uh, week one will be live coaching with me and we'll talk, we'll do a meet and greet. We'll go over calculating your very own specific macros. I'll teach you how to set up your My Macros Plus tracking app, how we're going to set you up and your kitchen for macros made easy success. We're going to do tutorials on making sure you're using your food scale correctly. And then we're going to get you in the nitty gritty on actually like creating your macros made easy meals, figuring out your macro sources, your protein, carbs, and fats, monitoring how we're going to monitor your progress with our weekly check-ins. We're going to teach you how you're going to do your metrics and your progress photos. And then we're going to have our week to our guest speaker. And our guest speaker is going to be um, a gal. She's going to teach us how this busy working mom reclaims her health and self-care with macro tracking and strength training. Then week three is going to be a week where we do our one-on-one coaching calls together. Just you and I, 30 minutes, one-on-one. And we're going to discuss everything about your goals and making sure that we're on track to hit your goals within the eight weeks and how we're going to pivot and navigate so i currently what i'm doing it is you know we get on the call and we talk about gals are now having christmas parties how they're going to navigate that they're eating at restaurants i navigate with you know looking at the menus with them figuring out what they're gonna what can fit into their current macros how they're going to navigate a non-track day weeks four to five we will come back to the group coaching and that's and then we talk about everything like okay now let's talk about in the group how are we macro tracking what does alcohol look like? I'm going to introduce a couple of strategies, carb cycling protocol. Um, you may not know what that is, but again, that's a strategy that we also use with people, macros uh, clients called carb cycling. We also going to talk about how we adjust the macros for your progress based upon our weekly feedback. I'm going to teach you my macros made easy, lazy meal prep. And then um, really go to easy sources, uh, macro made easy sources for protein, carbs, and fats. We're going to go over our snacks edition, and then our guest speaker is going to talk about how we can use, start, whether you're new or you're already in it, using strength training to accelerate body fat loss, no matter how beginner or advanced you are. So it's a very comprehensive eight-week program. Week six, we come back to the one-on-one coaching calls where we kind of navigate the past four weeks, see where you're at, pivot, plan, assess, analyze. And then week seven and eight is our live group coaching where I'm going to teach you macros made easy on the go. Um, We're going to do our progress roundup. We're going to talk about where do you go from here. Goal setting for your future self. We're going to have a special desserts edition and then we have a little bit celebration party. And then our guest speaker is going to talk about how a transformation is an inside job. So this is your next action steps, gang. So I've already signed up a few people for my collective. The early bird rate will end on Monday. So if you're on the fence, now's the time to take the leap. But if you're not sure where you want to start, this is the beginner steps that you can start right now. Use a macro tracking app. The one that I like and I use with my clients is called My Macros Plus. My Fitness Pal is great too, but My Macros Plus, if you use that, you can friend me. I can look at your stuff. You can see my stuff. We can work together that way. That's why I like My Macros Plus. You can, they have a really ease of uh, community that we can create within that app. So start just start measuring and weighing your food. You got to use a food scale though. A lot of beginners will start using measuring cups of weighing food in volume using a measuring cup is not accurate. You, I want you to use a food scale and if possible, I'd like you to weigh in grams. So Amazon has plenty of inexpensive food scales available. You just need a simple food scale to just weigh your food, right? Whenever you can. And yes, you need to weigh your food. Whether you enroll with me or not, whether you work on your own or not, you gotta weigh your food. You can't eyeball So no measuring cups or spoons. Use a food scale. That'll give us the most accurate info. Weigh in grams for non-wet food. Weigh in ounces for wet food. If you travel a lot, there's a great portable and discreet food scale that you can take on the go. Or use, go back and use that visual macros guide and plate as sort of your reference if you don't want to measure out and about. 
And it just really starts with starting honestly tracking the food you eat, right? You want to be able to get a baseline of at least five to seven days of consistent tracking, including a weekend, because we eat very different on the weekend than we do during the week. So you want to try and get five to seven days, just consistent tracking, just to kind of see where your macros, your numbers are out. And what you're going to find is going to be probably really eye-opening to you if you have not tracked before. A lot, a lot of the ladies, like 99.9% .9 of them under eat and they, they, they not, are not eating enough to bodies just to survive, thriving and thriving. You have calories to survive and the calories to thrive, but they're also way, way eating, under eating protein. And they all tell me the same thing. I eat a lot of protein yeah they tell me and drink a lot of water when push comes to shove and we start tracking it they kind of can see it's just data right like whoa that's not as much as I and uh protein and water that's like your two magic bullet a change we're keeping the muscle you currently have on your body right now because muscle is metabolic muscle burns calories by doing nothing it's just at rest it needs calories to survive so we want to maintain as much muscle on our bodies as we can because that's what's going to allow us to not only keep our bones strong but it'll keep us um eating a lot being able to eat a lot more food while maintaining a low, uh you know, the body fat goals that we want to maintain. So I want to thank, thank you for listening to me go on and on and on. <laughs> Does any questions now? Um, let me see if I can open it. There's, oh, nobody had you to track in that. I have a couple of minutes before I have to hop off for my two o'clock. Any, anybody have any struggles coming up with right now? Hey, Leanne, it's Amy. I have a question. Um, hi, Amy. Hi. You know, when you're um, here. Yes. Um, when you're when you said substitute like um, avocado for egg yolk, because they're yes. both fats, oh. right? Is there a reason? I mean, aside from like maybe you're watching your cholesterol or something. Is there a reason why you would substitute like egg yolk for avocado? The fiber. Oh, OK. Just the fiber. That's another thing that we look at too. If we're like looking at tracking your fiber, it's protein, water, fiber. So a lot of people don't necessarily pay attention to fiber, but fiber is just another, it's just a tool because it helps us keep us fuller mm. longer. Yeah. Got it. That's a good question. Did you watch part one and two? Um, I have to watch part two. I was here oh. for part one, but I still okay, got to okay. watch part two. Yeah, because part two was like the integral part where it teaches you how to calculate your number numbers right and then mm -hmm. now you got your numbers it's like now what right now you rock the numbers you have and see what happens right if you can be consistent with the numbers you have um and i say like give it at least four to six weeks um you'll be amazed right is how we when we start prioritizing the way we're distributing the food you're eating proteins carbs and fats how different you feel that's a great question any other questions Thanks for being on, Amy. I didn't, I guess I didn't see you in the beginning. I was talking and admitting people, admitting people. It's okay. Christine, can you give us a little testimonial since you've been tracking for a while? How it's helped uh, you? Not to yeah, put you I mean, on the spot. No, that's fine. I've lost, I haven't lost a ton of weight, but I've definitely, body's changing. I'm definitely seeing that. And it just gets easier. Like the more I've done it, the easier it gets. So yeah. it was hard at first to figure out what I could combine or what I could eat and how to plan the meals. But once I got in the groove of it, it's it's rolling along now. So good. And that's the thing, right? It's getting over that hump. At first, it does seem overwhelming and like a lot of working. But with anything you do, right? Anything you learn, learn a skill, macro tracking, something for your work, learning a language, it does get easier. Right. And Christine has a food restrictions. So that was that adds another element too when you just can't pull like a regular protein powder off the shelf or you have to be mindful of what other ingredients and packaging or food on food sources. So yes, it can be done. Thank you. Good job. Any other questions? 
Leanne, I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. So the um, this program is it on your website that you can sign up or how how do you? Oh yes, yeah. the link. Sorry, yeah, the link is actually when I send you the replay, the link will be linked into the slides. Okay. But I also put that's a good one. I'll put the uh, link in the chat. Look at me, so not business. <laughs> I'll put the link in the chat to sign up. So um, yeah, I've been a personal trainer for a really long time. And I always tell people like, if you're really looking for change, it starts with nutrition. I wish I could say exercise, right? Because then I would just never be out of work. <laughs> but it's really nutrition. And if someone's not, I'm really honest with clients, if they want to come and work with me on the exercise piece, if they're looking for change, body change, weight loss, body fat loss, and they're not willing to work on the nutrition piece, I really just tell them that it's like wasting their money because it is like 90 plus percent of your results is focusing on what you're eating to fuel those results. But when we can combine the two, that's why I have this three-pronged approach. When we combine the macros with the proper appropriate resistance training for you, especially after we hit the age of 40, You'd be amazed at what your body, what happens with your body composition when you just prioritize those two things, right? And again, it all starts up here, having a, a good mindset about what the process looks like and if that's doable for you at this point. Well, thank you so much, ladies. So nice to see you guys. Thank Thanks you, Leanne. Me. Um, you know, email me anytime. I'm always answering questions for everybody. And if you already signed up, for macros made easy. I sent you an email. So Gladys, did you get my email? No, you didn't get the email. Okay, I just need your address. I'm sorry. Hi, um, I, I think I got your email. That was sent um, a, while a while ago, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Can I have your, I needed your mailing address. For sure, I'll okay. um, send it to you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll <laughs> yeah. see you guys later. Thank you all. Thanks, Leanne. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. You too. Bye.